This is a very, very sunny day, the 8th of May or the VE day. And uh, it's 4.30 in the afternoon. The temperature is about 25 degrees centigrade, so warm. But I was told that the forecast for tomorrow is that the temperature is going to drop to 10 degrees. So at this time of the year in May, the temperature is always up and down. This is my light purple wisteria. The ray seams are about two foot long in the sunshine. And before my pink wisteria finishes, I thought I'd show you the pink wisteria again. I know you all love these little tours of the nursery, so why not? It's a lovely day and flowering trees only flower once a year. So let's enjoy it while we can. So the nursery looks very, very nice. This is one of my huge mountain maples in the sun. I thought I'd also show you my Japanese yew. It's come back a treat this year. This tree has not been put away for the winter, so it's emerged in the open. Usually if you leave these trees out in the winter, they don't do so well, but this tree has done exceptionally well. So looking at all our other trees, another little tour. I'm surprised the color is so good. Look at these Deshojos. They've kept the color so long. That's a big Deshojo. And this has come to be known as my chicken plucker tree because last year I did some leaf plucking on this tree. So the name has stuck. This has become the chicken plucker tree. That's my huge maple. And although it's locked down, things are still looking very good. And these are these beautiful white wisteria. Look at the blossom. I wish the television or this uh, a camera could take uh, or capture the smell. The smell is absolutely overpowering. It's so strong that I'm lost for words. It is really a lovely scent. And then this is a beautiful pine showing all the needles and the new candles appearing. Those are the cone flowers. I'm just walking around. This is the stock of our young red maples. Although it's late in the afternoon, that mountain maple, it was a bright orange color. Now it's changing slightly. So the colors of maples constantly change. So that's the beauty of the maple. That's another of my massive maples with a massive trunk. This is also looking well. All the maples are looking well this year. And I won't turn the camera off. I will just walk around and show you everything warts and all as they say blemishes and everything included i'm just walking past now this is a very interesting beach this is a cut leaf beach and this is planted in a forest the pot is about a uh, one meter long big pot our junipers are all outside now they were kept in the tunnel to protect it from the winter cold Now this is the back area. There are some developments afoot. We've applied for a new building to go up, so I'll wait and see if we are allowed to build. So I'm just walking past, that's a beach. All these native beaches have come into leaf. And those are my red deshojos. They still have the beautiful color. And now I'm going to walk into the tunnel Oh, while I'm walking into the tunnel, let's walk along the side here. All these trees have stood outside here throughout the winter. Usually if you leave the trees outside in the winter, for some reason they tend to suffer a bit and they don't emerge from the winter so well. But this year, all our trees have emerged extremely well. And in this late afternoon sun, the sun being low, it gives a different quality to the color of the uh, images that I'm taking. So I'm walking through. 
What I want to show you really, this tunnel is still chock-a-block and full of trees, are some of the trees that are in the nursery for our safekeeping. This is a four foot high triple trunk de shoujo maple. This I purchased from Japan in 1993 and it's been in my customer's collection for the last 10 years and it's here for repotting. I've just done the repotting about two months ago and there it is, absolutely grand tree. Look at that. And then on the other side, I'm just going to take you over to the other side, is the famous Peter Chan spling, split trunk maple. And this I put on Facebook the other day and everyone absolutely wowed about it. Look at that tree. It is a massive tree. You don't realize how big it is until you are near it. It really looks like a big tree that you would find growing in nature and you can imagine yourself sitting under this tree. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at these pictures. I did tell you that some idiot has been selling maple seeds with this image and he's turned the tree purple in color. So I hope he doesn't come to any good stealing people's images and selling his product using this picture of the tree. This, believe it or not, is a Satsuki Azalea. And I'm trying to find that tree that I did uh, some videos on growing maples from field grown trees and today the 8th of May a video came out showing how I repotted this tree so this is the tree in full leaf this is the tree that I started doing with a pickaxe and I put it in this big mica pot and look at it now it's virtually a complete bonsai it's still in the tunnel being protected but it's going to come out of the tunnel in the next day or so it's too heavy for me to carry otherwise i would have taken it out and that's the maple tree that i've been making less than a year ago and look at it now so it shows how quickly you can convert a field grown tree into a beautiful bonsai so that's a little mini tour i'll add to it before it is published so there it is for you to enjoy I'm going to now walk in, since I'm talking about trees that I have done for my YouTube videos, let me show you some other trees, because at different times of the year, the trees are all in different stages of development. These, by the way, are kinomalies, or Japanese quince, and they are in flower. That's a very big needle juniper. Again, a customer's tree that is in here for uh, working on. These are the ficuses that I repotted in an earlier YouTube video. And in case you think it is dying or dead, it certainly isn't. Let me home in and show you all these new buds that are coming sprouting from the old wood look at it absolutely covered in new bud so this is going to be full of leaf i think give it one or two months and it will be completely covered in leaf show you the progression these are the benichidoris which were that soft pink color and now they're all deep green they've all turned deep green so it just shows you how it changes that is a deshojo that is also deep green you can see the deshojo leaf they've got a very distinctive leaf shape so this is deshojo 
That is also the shoujo there. I will just walk through some of the pathways in my greenhouse. The greenhouse is our intensive care unit. Trees that are kept here are grown intensively to either reshape or restyle. And this humid atmosphere of this greenhouse makes them grow extremely well. The only trouble is that because everything grows well, the weeds grow well. So I've got to constantly keep weeding this place. There's a satsuki that has come out into flower early because it's been kept in here in intensive growing conditions, but it has picked up and I'm going to restyle and reshape this tree. And if you remember, I did an air layering of a maple, the largest maple air layering that you have ever seen. This is growing in its pot of moss. There you go. And this tree reaches the apex of this greenhouse. So it's about nearly 12 feet high. That is all one air layering, which I took off less than six months ago. I'm going to take it out of that pot and show you how well the roots have grown. So this is, I think, the longest or the largest air layering I have ever done. In fact, we had to cut about two or three meters of the tips of the branches off, if you remember, because it wouldn't fit into the greenhouse. So there you go. It shows how successfully you can grow an air layering, however large. And these are more trees showing you the progression of the color changes. This is one of the day shoujo's again. You can see the shoujo leaf shape, and they are virtually all green. They are all the shoujo's which have all turned green. These are our uh, trident maples recuperating. This is a de shoujo again. This hasn't turned so green, but they will all turn green. And those are the shoujo's there which have virtually turned green. And these are Benichidoris, and they are deep green, absolutely deep, intensive green. I will now take you outside and show you some of these big trident maples that we grew in the greenhouse, but I've taken them outside to the open because they're getting too hot indoors. And these are the large trident maples that we grow. Look at the leaf and look at the growth. I'm not going to prune it yet because I want the leaves to feed the trunk of the tree and this will make for a much healthier, stronger tree. And then in a couple of weeks time, I'm going to trim those shoots back. Lots and lots of blows juniper. And that's a view of our growing fields. Not growing fields, all these trees are in pots, but they were grown in the field and then we put them in pots ready for selling. Lovely, lovely sunny day. You can hear the birds singing. The birds are having a field day. Very few aeroplanes. This is a very large Orido Nishiki a large, large maple. And look at the size of the trunk. That pot is, I think that is a 90 centimeter diameter container. So that's a large pot and that's a large maple. I'll just walk around without saying anything because the bird song is probably better than my voice.
I'll show you some rare maples. This is a very rare maple. I can't even remember the name of this one. Look at the interesting leaves on this. This was a bonsai once, but I'm growing it into a big tree because I want to air layer it. Now this again, I think these are sold to me as Asahi Zuru or Rising Sun. I don't know what the equivalent English name is. And while we are under this tree, this is a deciduous magnolia. And these leaves have only emerged in the last two weeks. And they are only, I would say, about 30 centimeter long. When the leaves are fully grown, they are about 50 to 60 centimeter long. And hence the name, this magnolia is called Magnolia longiflora or longifolia, I think because of the long leaves. It's a deciduous magnolia. The flowers are not all that pretty, although it's got a unusual quality about it. Not a gaudy flower, but interesting flower, but it doesn't have a fragrance. This magnolia doesn't have any fragrance. In fact, it is a very funny musky type of smell. Those are some of the maples that we grow. I love this late sunshine because the afternoon sun coming low, you get these beautiful images. So I'm going to stop the camera and take some still shots for a moment. So to continue my little tour of the gardens on May the 8th, I thought I'd show you what is going around because you seem to enjoy these little walks and I will continue to do that. These were the big pines that I pruned hard last year. So look at the length of the candles. They're all about four inches long. But because I gave this tree a very hard prune last year, I'm not going to have to prune hard into the branches. I'll just take the candles off. So if you leave the candles untouched, they become almost a foot long. So already you can see these candles are six inches long. So another six inches they will grow. And if you leave them, they will spoil the shape of these garden pines. So that's how we keep them under control. And this is a view of our learning center or our yoga center. So this year we haven't had any events in our center. Normally it's buzzing with life with opera singers, dancers, yoga people, Tai Chi people, you name it. They all come here to use the center and to enjoy this lovely garden. And let me go into the pond because I want to show you all these thousands of little tadpoles that are here. The fish are going absolutely berserk. Look at the fish. And you can see there all these myriads of tadpoles which will become frogs. So we have a very eco-friendly garden here. We have frogs, we have grass snakes. The grass snakes are not poisonous and they eat slugs, snails and frogs. So this all adds to the eco nature of this pond so the pond hasn't come fully into life there is one flag iris yellow iris in bloom but we also have the japanese irises which are blue white and pink so they are about to flower those are japanese iris and the understock of this wisteria this is a white wisteria which was grafted onto the wild blue stock so the blue flowers come first and you can just about see the white flowers beginning to bloom these are the white flowers which are just starting to bloom and believe you me the racemes of the white flowers are about two to three foot long i'm not exaggerating when they're in full flower i will take a picture of it again so as I walk across the stepping stones, 
I'm just showing you some of the plants that are in flower. This plant is called the Formosan lily and the botanical name is Libertia grandiflora. This maple that's growing in our pond here, this is supposed to be the red Shigi Tatsusawa or the red lace leaf maple. In the autumn, it's got a lovely color. And this is the uh, water buttercup, I think. Someone told me you could eat the leaves. I tried eating the leaves. It tastes like spinach, but slightly bitter. And here in this clump, all these beautiful Formosan lily is in bloom. I'm trying to see if I can come across a grass snake. They usually lie on the rocks at midday to bask in the midday sun, but I haven't seen any yet. And this is a creeping mugo pine. It just creeps naturally. This is every bit three or four meters long, one single plant. And look at the candles on this one. And the sister plant, which is on this side, again, about three meters either way, it's still at least two meters or two and a half meters. And I pruned it hard to show the beauty of the trunk. So when it is fully developed, I will show you what it looks like. And let me just climb out of this pond area. My cycads are normally grown in the greenhouse in the winter, but they are out in the open now. So they stay in the open from mid-April to about end of October. One thing that I would like to show you are the beech trees. Do you remember in June of last year, on the 15th of June, I got about 30 or so uh, large hedging beech that were thrown on the skip. They hadn't been watered for a couple of months, so they were almost all dead. And I rescued them and put them in pots. I just counted the other night. I discovered that of the 30 or 40, at least three quarters of them, something like 24 or 25 of them, are still alive. So I'm going to take you to an area where I will show you how these beech have managed to survive. Here's some more trees. These are our maple seedlings. These are seedlings that we've grown over the years. We grow them from seed and then we pot them on into bigger and bigger pots. This is the large hollow trunk elm that I did a video about. It's completely covered in leaf. I need to th trim it in order to make it look more bonsai-like. Now let me go to this area where the beach are around. These are our large conker trees along our boundary. And here we are. These are the beach trees that I rescued. And they're all coming into leaf. This one is already into leaf. These were the trees I rescued. Some of the branches did die back. These are all dead, but they're breaking back from the trunk, from really old wood. So they're all breaking back from the hard wood of the trunk. So all these beech have survived. As I say, these are the ones that are successful. The ones which are dead are these two. These two didn't come through. So. This is a batch it. I'm just going to make a quick count. That's 5, 10, 15. There's 25 beach there. 25 of those have survived and two are not successful. 
So two out of 27 is not a bad uh, failure rate. Two out of 27 didn't make it, but the other 25 have survived. So these were trees that I got for free. I love showing you all these strange looking trees. Now this is a large uh, European hornbeam that was made from an air layer. Again, that tree is every bit five or six feet tall. Look at that, it's absolutely massive. And this was an air layering, an air layering, six foot high air layering with a trunk diameter of six or eight inches. So it's just growing still in moss and peat, so very light. I did a video about making conquer tree bonsai, so that's going to appear. So I hope you've enjoyed this mini tour while I'm in the middle of making more YouTube videos. This hopefully will come out pretty soon. These are very large maples. This is Acer, uh, not Japonicum. This is, no, this is Acer Japonicum, not Acer Palmatum. So they are absolutely massive trees. They were about four meters high. That means over 14 feet high. I chopped them down and planted it in these great big 200 liter pots. There are three or four of them. I will gradually air layer the tops, but I don't like this species because the leaves are very big. They almost look like a sycamore, but they have stunning autumn color, really beautiful autumn color. And while I'm here, I always like to show you unusual things. This is a dawn redwood called Pixie. And look at the new growth coming from the old wood. Again, trunk diameter, the base is about, I have two of these, is about eight to 10 inches and the tree itself is about four foot high. I've been trying to make bonsai from that for years and years, but I'll get around to it one day. It's a very difficult tree to grow because the new growth comes out and then it dies. So these are all the unusual things we have growing. This in fact is another Japonicum. This is not a Palmatum, it's a Japonicum, but the leaves are more interesting than the other Japonicum. But this Japonicum is more interesting than this Japonicum. But they're all Japanese maples. Talking of interesting trees. Now this one is called Shigo-san. This one has got leaves this shape and leaves this shape and then thread-like leaves. So on this single tree, you got these thread-like leaves You've got normal shape leaves, and then you've got midway, which are not thread light, but nevertheless, still quite thin leaves. So this is an exceedingly rare maple. And during lockdown, my two cars, or the van and the car, have stood there since the 14th of March. It hasn't left the nursery, and today is the 8th of May. Nearly two months, the vehicles have just stood still. What strange times we live in. So on that note, I will just end this little mini tour and I hope my uh, assistant or my manager Bodhi will put it out fairly soon so that you can enjoy this. So there you go.